The Polyus Soviet Space Laser. The Polyus Skiff DM spacecraft was a Soviet orbital weapon system designed to destroy President Ronald Reagan's Strategic Defense Initiative satellites with an innovative and lethal carbon dioxide laser. While Reagan's program was known as the Star Wars program, the Polyus was identified by the public as the Soviet Death Star or the Soviet Space Laser. Both projects were part of the rising tensions between the US and the Soviet Union in the early 1980s. Mikhail Gorbachev expressly prohibited launching the Polyus because he feared it would trigger an adverse military reaction from Reagan. But the Soviet military, arguing it was a defensive measure against American dominance in space, launched it on May 15, 1987, from Site 250 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The skiff mounted on the Polyus's energy a rocket was a small 1 megawatt carbon dioxide laser composed of a functional block and a purposeful module. It weighed nearly 90,000 kilograms and was 40 meters long and 4 meters in diameter. The functional block was equipped with a power system made of solar panels and small rocket engines to place the payload into orbit. Meanwhile, the purposeful module carried carbon dioxide tanks and turbo generators to produce the laser. The turbo generators pumped the carbon dioxide, which resulted in the atoms emitting light. During the skiff's final tests, engineers realized the spacecraft would expel vast amounts of carbon dioxide, which would make it evident for Americans to figure out that it was a laser. To disguise the skiff, the Soviets resorted to a combination of krypton and xenon for its venting system. Upon interaction with ionospheric plasma around the Earth, the spacecraft would disguise itself as part of a geophysics team. Fortunately for Gorbachev and the whole world, the engines of the Polyus failed, and the spacecraft turned into pieces of debris before reaching orbit. T-42 Super Heavy Tank Long before the Soviets produced the legendary T-34 medium tank that proved to be more than a worthy competitor to the German Panzers, the Red Army struggled to produce a worthy series of armored vehicles. One of the earliest prototypes of super-heavy tanks produced by the Communist forces was the T-42. This hundred-ton colossus was created in cooperation with Germany during the aftermath of World War I. German and Soviet technicians worked closely to develop tanks and armored vehicles as part of the Kazan Tank School, and German designer Edvard Grote was approached by the Soviet general staff to create a one-of-a-kind super-heavy tank. This type of vehicle often weighed more than twice the average of standard tanks, and they became notorious during the interwar period. After several failed designs, Grote presented the general staff a draft of a heavy tank that weighed 75 tons. Although rejected at first, the German engineer made tweaks to the design and called it T-42. This improved version caught the attention of the Soviets for its 100-ton weight and its heavy armament. The tank was equipped with five turrets and included a 107mm M1910 field gun, two 7.62mm machine guns, and two 45mm BT-2 tank turrets. The armament was distributed in five armored towers, and a crew of 15 men was required to control the tank. For a clearer view of the battlefield, the driver's compartment was located along the tank's axis. The position was aggressively pushed forward with a sophisticated and heavy superstructure. The power compartment was at the rear, and the projected horsepower of the 100-ton tank was estimated at 2,000 to move at a speed of 17 miles per hour. Two diesel engines were necessary to provide the required power. The T-42's supertension consisted of 17 twin small-diameter rollers, a rear-driving sprocket, and an idler at the front. It also included an electric transmission to facilitate management. But the project was cancelled before the prototype entered production. Like all super-heavy tanks of the era, the vehicle proved too costly, slow, heavy, and, most importantly, too visible for enemy aircraft and artillery. The T-42 was basically a sitting duck in relation to the new type of warfare that would wage fear in the fields of Europe. Bigger and heavier did not translate to better and the Soviets moved on to the T-35 tank. Tupolev AN-T-20 Propaganda Plane
In the aftermath of World War I, every nation involved in the conflict began developing more powerful aircraft to support troops for ground operations. Military tacticians knew that aircraft would play a key role in future conflicts and experimented with different configurations. The Soviet Union, on the other hand, wanted something different. As another effective way to increase propaganda of the Marxist regime, Soviet leader Joseph Stalin approved the development of the Tupolev ANT-20, an eight-engine aircraft that would become the largest warplane ever built. The gigantic aircraft had a wingspan of 206 feet and was baptized with the name of Maxim Gorky to commemorate the literary career of the Russian author. This was not a coincidence, as the Tupolev ANT-20 was conceived with the specific purpose of promoting communist ideas. To achieve this task, the Maxim Gorky was equipped with a massive library, printing equipment to drop thousands of leaflets, a radio set to speak to the masses, and even a projector to display propagandistic images in the skies. The aircraft required at least 10 men to function properly, and it could house up to 72 passengers. The Maxim flew for the first time in 1934. It would accomplish its propaganda missions for over a year before it fatally crashed during an air demonstration over Moscow on May 18, 1935. During the air show, an I-5 piloted by Nikolai Begin performed three-loop maneuvers around the Maxim Gorky. As it was conducting the third one, the I-5 collided with one of the Maxim's wings. The aircraft then crashed in a residential neighborhood near the Sokol metro station, and 45 people lost their lives. Russian engineers eventually built another Maxim Gorky, but the launching of Operation Barbarossa and the German offensive of 1941 made it impossible to return to its propagandistic roots. This new aircraft was used to transport troops to the front lines. It fatally crashed on December 14, 1942, after the pilot allowed a passenger to take his seat to get a feel for the aircraft. The passenger accidentally disengaged the automatic pilot and sent the plane into an abrupt nosedive at 1,600 feet. No more attempts to resurrect the aircraft were made. Soviet Aircraft 100 The Sukhoi T-4, or Secret Project 100, was a Soviet Union high-speed reconnaissance and strategic bomber aircraft design that never materialized beyond the prototype room. During the Cold War, the United States and the Soviet Union were engaged in an arms race to overwhelm each other with an incredible arsenal that ranged from aircraft, tanks, and weapon designs to lethal nuclear bombs. Through the effective use of spies and defectors, both countries copied one another's latest innovations, but they were not always successful. The Sukhoi T-4 was born as the Soviet Union's response to the North American B-70 Valkyrie, a six-engine strategic bomber capable of reaching Mach 3 speed while flying at altitudes of over 70,000 feet. In 1963, the Soviet regime issued a request for an aircraft of similar capabilities to counter the American bomber. The Sukhoi prevailed. This aircraft was to be capable of reaching a cruise speed of approximately 2,600 miles per hour. However, the Soviets did not have this type of technology, and over 600 inventions were required to fulfill the Mach 3 capability. The Sukhoi was physically similar to the American B-70. It featured intake ramps and was made entirely of steel and titanium. The first prototype flew in 1971 with lackluster results. It was only able to reach Mach 1.3 at 39,000 feet before the project was canceled due to budget constraints. Only one T-4 survives to this day. It is on display at the Central Air Force Museum in Monino, Russia. Kalinin K-7 Experimental Bomber The Kalinin K-7 was one of the Soviet Union's earliest attempts at producing an aircraft of giant proportions. Like the famed super-heavy tanks of the years following World War I, European nations believed that bigger was better, including warplanes. The K-7 was named after its designer, Konstantin Kalinin, a Soviet Revolution and World War I veteran. Kalinin designed the K-7 in both civilian and military configurations. As a civilian aircraft, the K-7 could carry 120 passengers. For troop transportation, it could take 112 fully equipped paratroopers. In its bomber configuration, the K-7 was equipped with eight 7.62mm machine guns, eight 20mm cannons, and a bomb load of up to 21,200 pounds. 
The K7 also included two twin booms and unusual underwing pods that housed the landing gear and some of the machine guns. The first Kalinin flew in 1933. Instability and vibration issues alarmed engineers, which led them to make some modifications to the airframe. Nonetheless, during a test flight in November of 1933, the K-7 crashed due to a tail boom malfunction, resulting in 14 casualties. There were rumors of possible sabotage, but they were never proven. Two more prototypes were eventually ordered, but the project was canceled in 1935 before they saw the light of day. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels, and tell us in the comments below about other unique topics of your interest.